So what's written in my math lab, um, it, just in your main menu here on the left, there'll be stat crunch as an option. Um, so that's what we're going to go open. We're going to go visit the website and uh, type or paste data in. We already have data that we have, like you could get data from your textbook or you can just paste it in. I'm just going to paste it in in this case. Now, what I need is the revenue. that in and then number of partners as well MAS and AB paste all of those in and now go to stat and regression multiple linear and your Y is your sorry your y is your revenue your x's are the other four variables and here's where we do the subsets say all subsets and hit compute okay and the only thing we actually need from stat crunch here is this table this is going to help us get our cps so there we go so we copy that table before you close that window make sure that you were able to um you're able to paste that table Okay, so I'm not, so make sure I'm going to re-highlight it, copy it, and then paste it in Excel. picky pasting over there we go good uh, okay so this number up at the top here that stat crunch outputs is what's called your K and uh, I'm just gonna pause for a second and go grab the formula for the CP statistic that I'm gonna use sorry Okay, so here's the formula I'm using the CP statistic there's a few things I'm gonna need for it uh, the M the T and the RT. The RT is the um, R squared of the regression with all possible variables, which is actually this top one. Uh, StatCrunch always puts that uh, regression model with all of the possible X variables in it at the very top here. So that's my RT. Uh, now, my T is my total number of parameters um, in the full model. That's going to be the four X variables uh, right here, plus one, one uh, being the Y variable. And now N is just your number of data you actually have. Uh, I'm gonna go count them here. I'm just gonna do a count call. Uh, there's 30 data total. So I'm gonna need that for each of my CP statistics. Um, so my CP statistic is one minus my R squared from the model. Um, that's just been run times by n lock that minus t lock that that also doesn't change that's the same for all of the CP statistics divided by 1 minus RT again that guy lock that the RT is always the R squared of the total regression model which is this top one uh, minus bracket n which is 30 minus 2 times by bracket k plus 1 where k is your number of variables in that specific regression so that one we do not lock sorry plus 1 close bracket and close bracket again and then copy that down Now, ideally, the best regression model will be the one with a CP as close to K plus one without going over. So this guy looks really good. These two here aren't bad. That one doesn't go over either. They're fairly close, three, 3.4 and 3.89. This would be the next choice then. Five 
is the closest to five possible. Uh, this one's not bad. This one's not bad. Um, this two as opposed to three is not bad. Um, but the best of them all is if you actually are exactly equal to k plus one. So this this um, model right here is the one we're going to start with. Uh, so what that means now is we're going to um, build up, let's call this subset one, build up a regression where we use the revenue as the y variable. That's what we were, um, that's our original y, and the number of partners through b as our independence. Notice that number of professionals has been excluded from this data set. Uh, and let's put this output in the subset one tab that I've created. Uh, good idea is to output your residuals, your residual plots, and your normality probability plots. Okay. Now, next thing we do is take a look at these p-values and see if any of them are bad. Okay, and the worst one of them all, there, there's actually a bunch of ones that are unacceptable. Um, these three here are all high. The very worst is the 0.82. So, just going to pause this for a moment. So what that means, um, we need to pull out variable B, but because it's related to A, these two go together, A and B, and they both have bad p-values. If A had a good p-value, for example, I'm just going to modify this for one sec. If this was 0 0.005 for its p-value, um, Notice my cutoff in general, I, I have a 5% uh, acceptance for the p-value or level of significance. Um, so if my A was okay, then A and B would stay. Um, since the A p-value is also bad, both of these variables are going to be removed um, or pulled out of this model at the same time. Okay, so I'm just going to be left with number of partners and MAS. Let's call that subset 2. And let's run that regression. So now we're only going to MAS. And I'm going to call this subset 2. Run another regression. And now number of professionals is good but MAS is bad. So we're going to also next remove this variable. And so we're going to run a regression with only the number of partners. Or sorry, yeah, only the number of partners as our independent variable. So we're just going to grab subcolumn C. Now we finally have a good p-value, that's a really good p-value, our significance f is really good, our adjusted r squared is good, so this is our final regression model. It takes quite a few steps to get there.